One evening, young people swimming in the city port suddenly see a man emerging from the sea. He asks for help, and soon the heads of several more people in old-fashioned clothes appear nearby. Detective Lars Holland arrives at the scene and is told by the rescued individuals that they belong to the community of Olaf the Fat. Lars finds a young man who knows Scandinavian languages, who then puzzledly informs him that the people pulled from the water speak in some old dialect. Lars plans to call in psychiatrists, but then TV reports from different parts of the planet come in. Everywhere, people from various periods of the past have started appearing out of the water. Scientists cannot provide any explanations. Several years pass, Norwegian society has changed significantly due to the continued arrival of people from other eras. Lars has divorced and shares custody of his daughter Ingrid with his ex-wife. Due to constant stress, he has started using a substance given to the newcomers for mental stabilization, Temproxat, but he hides this from those around him. One day, Ingrid, who was spending the night at her father's place, asked to be taken to her mother, who remarried a gentleman from the last century after the divorce. In the elevator, the pair encounters a goat kept there by neighbors who are former residents of the Stone Age. They have to take the stairs. After dropping off his daughter, Lars receives a call and goes to the seashore, where the body of a girl from the past has been found. A colleague thinks it's an accident, but Lars can't draw any conclusions yet. That same morning, his department welcomes a new detective, a girl from the past named Alf Hilder, who has undergone training at the police academy. Lars examines the drowned woman with Stone Age tattoos and strange marks on her back. Experts determine that she was strangled. Lars assigns Alf Hilder as his partner and entrusts her to lead the murder investigation. The pair goes to question port police officers and find one of them, Yeppe, receiving an injection. The guy explains that he helped a newcomer out of the water over the weekend and the newcomer scratched him, necessitating tetanus shots. After the conversation, the pair heads to the temporary center where all the newcomers are brought. There are quite a few people and they all need to be taken care of, explained what happened to them, and given temproxit. The newcomers are shown a photo of the deceased, but no one recognizes her. Only one girl suddenly claims to have seen a monster with burning eyes, Hafgufa, coming for the deceased. In the evening, Lars returns home and visits a neighbor from the past who supplies him with drops. The neighbor is butchering a goat in the kitchen with his son helping him. Having received what he needed, Lars returns home. The next day, Alf Hilde reports about the monster at the department meeting, causing the policeman to laugh. However, Lars notices that the description of half Gufa almost entirely matches that of a fishing trawl net. Alf Hilder suddenly sees a photo of a man in a nearby cafe on social media and goes there. She finds him in the restroom and reminds him of a very unpleasant encounter with him 1,007 years ago. The man laughs at her and Alf Hilder attacks him. Lars, who followed the woman, hears the screams from the restroom. The battered man escapes, not wanting to deal with the police. Lars accuses his partner of overstepping, and she then admits she knows the effects of Temproxat well. So if he reports her, she won't keep silent either. Lars backs down and drives her to the trailer where she lives. From this point on, the partners find common ground. That same night, two men use a net to catch a young girl from the past in the bay. The action shifts to 1031 AD. The warrior maiden Alf Hilder arrives at a gathering of huts, searching for her commander, Torir the dog, the killer of Olaf the Fat. A seer tells her that a red-haired girl was already looking for him, and Torir himself is in a place where cities shine with thousands of lights. In the present, Lars saves his wild neighbor from bandit attacks and heads to the station. He tells Ulf Hilder about his trawl net idea and asks her to look for those who purchase such nets. She finds a mention of a security agency called Crow Magnon. Meanwhile, several wild-looking people are hunting in the suburban forest. A completely naked man catches a hare and heads to a house, revealing that Navin, a long-adapted modern-day caveman, is married to the mansion's owner. Later, two employees of the Crow Magnon Security Agency come to him and inform him that the police are asking about the incident. He orders them to gather all the captured women from the brothels where they were sold. At the station, Alf Hilder learns about a woman detained by the police, who turns out to be her older sister. Despite their strained relationship, she helps Erd, Lars's neighbors come to thank him for saving their father. It turns out that their mother and wife were with them, but they lost her at sea. That evening, Alf Hilder and Erd celebrate their reunion and suddenly see a cro van stopping near a brothel. She photographs both workers and tells her colleagues the next morning about her suspicion of the security agency's involvement in human trafficking. Lars reveals that the Cro-Magnon employees are from prehistoric times, but the van is registered to a modern guy named Getty. They start surveillance. The police find their ship and then the place where the women are held. They attack the guards, neutralize them, and take the women to the city. 
Yepi, meeting them at the pier, expresses his admiration and asks Alfield her out. She agrees. Lars notices one of the women has a tattoo similar to his neighbor's. Later, he interrogates Gady, but he denies everything. That same day, Lars asks his neighbor and son to come to the station. He brings the pair to the found woman, tearfully watching the family reunion. At night, he and Alf Hilder review footage from cameras on the shore and find a video of the deceased woman entering the water four hours before her murder. But how could she have been there long before the transition? The next day, a man named Tommy, working as a delivery man, gets into a bicycle accident. He goes to a nearby store's restroom to tidy up, and suddenly the janitor recognizes his former commander, Torer the dog, but the man doesn't understand what this person is talking about and leaves. Meanwhile, an expert informs Lars and Alf Hilder that the drowned woman is not from the past, though she tried to portray it. The detectives head to the center for those displaced from the past, and while they question the director, his employee Ada secretly copies the contents of their laptops. Later, the police decide to detain the nightclub director, who used the services of captive women, but he flatly refuses to talk about Novin's role in their business. After the interrogation, Alf Hilder is about to put her gun in a storage locker and accidentally shoots Lars in the leg. Meanwhile, Erd learns from a familiar Viking about his encounter with Torer the dog. Ingrid and her friend Maddie find Lars's Temproxit, and Maddie secretly steals one vial. That same day, Erd informs Alf Hilder about Torer the dog. They find his address and learn that the man is married and has a young daughter. The warrior women track him down and go to his home, but the man doesn't recognize them as he has completely forgotten his past upon transitioning and doesn't remember the Old Norse language. The next morning, technicians confirm a weapon malfunction and Alf Hilder is cleared to continue her duties. She finds a man fitting the description named Navin and the pair goes to his house, but he denies everything despite the evidence. After the police leave, Navin notices Ada spying on his house, who admits she knows the drowned woman and invites him to a meeting. Meanwhile, Erd tries again to remind Torer of who he is, but the man drives off. The warrior woman notices that he's being followed and informs her sister. As they try to find out who is tracking their commander, he is attacked by followers of Olaf the Fat, whom he killed in the past. Under the influence of fear, Torer begins to recall fragments of his battles and fends off the attackers. Afterward, he approaches the warrior women and asks them to tell him about Torer the dog. Sometime later, a stylist comes to the police and reports that he did the drowned woman's tattoos and removed all signs of her modern origin. Additionally, a man named Navin was interested in her. During a hunt, a Cro-Magnon man dies, shot by a drone. The next morning, Ingrid and her friends try to simulate a time migration, with Maddie taking Temproxat and jumping into the water while her friends film her. Suddenly, the girl disappears in a flash of light and soon reappears surrounded by Vikings. Ingrid jumps into the water to help Maddie while the friends call for help. Lars and Alf Hilder examine Navin's body, but it becomes clear that the guy was not killed there and had crawled quite a distance before dying. Lars receives a message about an incident with Ingrid and goes to the transit camp where the girls were isolated due to contact with time migrants. Both are found to have Temproxit in their blood. Meanwhile, Alf Hilder insists on an immediate search of the forest. However, the police are skeptical. It's already evening, and it looks like it will rain soon. At the center, Maddie visits Ingrid and confesses that she is having visions. In the short time she was in the water, her teeth have deteriorated significantly. Denied immediate action by the police, Alf Hilder turns to Erd and her friends for help. The ancient hunters head to the forest. Ingrid confesses to her father that they used his Temproxat. Meanwhile, in the forest, the old hunter finds the crime scene. The next morning, Alf Hilder reports the search results and receives gratitude from her superiors. But who could have operated the drone? The detectives recall the Neo-Luddites who, after arriving in the future, began a fight against modern technology. Meanwhile, Alf Hilder's adversary, Detective Vench, finds Erd's page and begins to suspect her involvement with the clan of warrior women, which threatens her job since warriors from the past are not allowed in the police or army. Lars and Alf Hilder receive a list of those trained to operate drones and find Ada among them. That evening, Maddie comes home and suddenly, seeing her cross, starts praying fervently. The next morning, Lars is awakened by a knock on the door. A persistent stranger insists on talking about the god Odin and refuses to leave. Enraged, Lars throws him into the corridor where his neighbor inquires about the detective's well-being. He assures him that he is fine and heads to work, where they report about Ada to the department. Meanwhile, the news reports that Tommy is actually Torir the dog, the murderer of King Olaf the Fat, who was revered for the Christianization of Norway. The man is fired from his job. The detectives learn that Ada had an affair with one of the newcomers who opposed progress. 
Torir is pursued by hordes of religious fanatics. Urd and Alf Hildur go to support their commander. Later, Lars reports that he found the address of a warehouse rented by Ada, and they head there. However, they are told that the woman had just taken the keys to the premises. They go there, but Ada manages to escape. The detectives search the warehouse and find Maddie's file. They go to the girl's house, who feels increasingly worse and has almost forgotten the modern language. Alf Hilder recognizes her dialect and writes down the numbers Maddie keeps repeating. She saw them on the wall but can't say anything else. Erd informs her sister that Torir agreed to participate in a boxing match against an Olaf the Fat supporter for money. She leaves while Lars continues searching the warehouse and finds the drowned woman's jacket. Ada seeks refuge with her former Luddite lover. Meanwhile, the fight between the Olaf supporter and Torir begins. Lars finds a piece of paper with numbers written on it. In the ring, the warrior women realize their commander is fighting at half strength and remind him of a past victory. An almost defeated Torir remembers it, stands up and wins. That same day, Lars learns that Tem Proxat was found in Alf Hildur's car. He confesses to his superior that the drug belongs to him and steps down from his duties. Alf Hildur agrees to a date with Yepi. That evening, Lars returns home to find the morning man there. The man reminds him that he was the first to be rescued from the past by the detective. He adds a couple of digits to the sequence found by Lars, and he immediately understands that these are the coordinates of the time rift, and all the found women are connected to it. Meanwhile, Yepi pulls a hair from a sleeping Alf Hilder and takes it with him. The next day, a recently arrived Viking suddenly says he remembers something and asks for a phone. The center staff are astonished as he calls Maddie and tells her he remembers everything. Thanks to the clothes found by Lars, the police identify the drowned woman. It also turns out that she was connected to the new Luddites and supported their protests against modern technology. Lars explains that he was helped by an ancient Norwegian who arrived with the first group, which surprises Alf Hilder. She finds his file and discovers something shocking. Her partner is trying to get a new dose of Temproxit, but his neighbor no longer deals with it. In the evening, Ingrid, Alf Hilder, and his neighbor visit Lars's apartment. They are worried about him because that man from the past died two years ago. The neighbor filmed Lars arguing with thin air in the corridor. The detective has to acknowledge the obvious, his addiction. Later, Ingrid asks her father to calm down the port police, who are very interested in Maddie. Lars is surprised, finds the port police duty schedule, and discovers that neither Yeppe nor his partner were on duty the day the woman drowned. He tells Alf Hilder, no one could have scratched Yeppe. So why was he getting shots? The woman reviews the intimate photos they exchanged and finds bite marks on his skin. The expert checks the drowned woman's teeth for blood and compares it with the biological material left inside Alf Hilder. Both policemen are arrested for murder. Alf Hilder is awarded for solving the case. However, Lars is still puzzled by the mystery of Maddie and the time rift and asked to continue the investigation. Meanwhile, Tarir takes his daughter for a boat ride and holding a life jacket, remembers something. Later, he gathers all his relatives and friends at the table to celebrate his relocation day. He has no idea that a devout Olaf supporter plans to kill him. Erd notices the armed man, throws herself in front of Torir, and takes a fatal bullet. Torir and his supporter bury the woman according to ancient customs. That night, Lars is kidnapped by Ada's friends. The woman explains that the government is conducting illegal tests on those who pass through the time rifts. The drowned woman wanted to test everything herself. They had no idea that port officers were colluding with pimps. Ada gives the detective a hard drive with material on all these cases. Torres tells Alf Hilder about his memory. He and his Vikings found a girl in a modern life jacket in the open sea, and it was Alf Hilder. Lars's unreal friend visits him again, hinting that time doesn't flow in just one direction, as the government claims. Meanwhile, Maddie goes to an abandoned temple, where she digs up a sword and a cross from a place she remembers. Soon, Olaf the Fat himself arrives, calls her sweet, and placing her on a horse, promises to show her the salvation of pagan souls. Whitechapel, 1888. Ben Joseph is informed of another crime by Jack the Ripper, and he goes out on the hunt. Meanwhile, three women of easy virtue discuss their journey, which they must undertake if they do not want to share the fate of the other deceased. Ben Joseph manages to see them leaving the tavern. Present day. Lars listens to the news on TV, where it is reported about a blogger who claims to be Olaf the Fat, the King of Norway, who Christianized the country. His statements have divided Norway into his supporters and opponents, but the authorities do nothing. Alf Hilder receives a call to the subway tunnel, where the body of a woman is found. She and Venka inspect the mutilated body and later report that the woman came from the 19th century. She has no documents, and it is impossible to identify her for now. 
Meanwhile, Lars, who has undergone treatment for addiction, is appointed as a consultant on this case. On the same day, detectives receive an expert's report that the killer is skilled with a knife. All wounds are very precise. But the main thing, the female genitals are mutilated masterfully. In the meantime, Olaf the Fat seeks recognition as the King of Norway. But an official informs him that his request has been denied. Maddie suggests telling the world about their acquaintance, but Olaf is sure it will not help. He suffers deeply from not being able to regain power. Alf Hilder has other problems. She suddenly notices that she walks at night. Torir sends her to a sorceress from their time, the Volva. After examining her, the Volva tells her that she sees a girl in the sea wearing a bright vest. Alf Hilder believes that Torir shared his memories with the witch and, angered, leaves. The man denies this. Meanwhile, Lars finds information about an identical murder that took place in England. The police chief contacts the British police regarding a possible connection between the crimes. Olaf, seeing an ancient warrior's skull in a museum, realizes how to obtain evidence of his royal lineage, as he knows where his son, King Magnus, is buried. After the appeal, two Scotland Yard officers arrive in Oslo, one of whom turns out to be Ben Joseph from the past, who explains that there was an event a year ago. A man, threatening with a knife, escaped and remained unregistered. Later, a woman was found killed in a way familiar to Joseph, so he thinks that the Ripper, having traveled to the present, committed the murders. Joseph gives Lars a book describing all the known murders committed by the Ripper. The detective returns home and starts reading, but suddenly sees a light going out in the bay, which always happens during an event. And then a strange creature appears before him, stating that it is Odin. At this time, Ben Joseph asks a police officer to print some documents for him. Then he and his partner burn their police IDs. That night, Olaf receives the skull of his son, Magnus, which was stolen from Nidaros Cathedral. In the morning, a journalist from a central publication receives a letter containing a severed body part, causing her to faint. Lars compares the handwriting in the letter with the Ripper's messages and finds a clear similarity. Later, realizing that his psyche cannot cope, the detective again acquires banned substances and upon arriving home, meets Odin, who draws Lars's attention to the fact that the book given by Joseph was taken from a psychiatric hospital's library. In the morning, he asks his boss to call Scotland Yard and they find out that no one from England was sent to Oslo. The police contact the real Clark from the homicide department and her partner, Blake, who show photos of the suspects who arrived in Oslo under their names. That day, Olaf and his people send a package with Magnus's skull to tour the dog's house and direct the police there. Meanwhile, the police forensics identifies the body part as a dolphin's clitoris. Ben Joseph and his partner go to meet the leader of a neo-Luddite cult. That same day, the police find a bag with Magnus's skull at Tour the dog's house and arrest him. He recalls that on the night of the cathedral robbery, he was at a party at the Volvas, but remembers nothing. Alf Hilder mocks his confidence that he ate candies at the witch's place. In the evening, Ingrid informs her parents about her pregnancy from a random guy. Alf Hilder goes to the Volva, who admits she was in the Viking village when they brought a girl found in the sea wearing a vest. Lars finds information about Ben Joseph. The next day, he tells his colleagues that Joseph was treated for paranoid schizophrenia, but he is indeed from the past, where he searched for Jack the Ripper, although he was likely the criminal himself. Lars asks police officer Alex to find out what exactly Ben Joseph printed at their reception. He finds copies of documents about three women from 19th century England who arrived in the present and sends a report to Blake, informing him that Ben Joseph now also knows the girls' names and deletes the files. That night, the Volva meets Olaf the Fat and informs him that her prophecy about a creature traveling through time was likely wrong and pertains not to Maddie, but to Alf Hilder. Meanwhile, Alf Hilder and Lars arrive in London. Agents Clark and Blake admit that Joseph was indeed in Oslo during the murder and his nervous breakdown occurred after learning about the Holocaust and the death of all his descendants in a gas chamber. They know that Joseph and his partner are hiding with the Neo-Luddites who use pigeon posts for communication. To find their whereabouts, they need to locate the pigeon loft. That evening, Ingrid informs her boyfriend about the pregnancy, and he harshly forbids her from getting rid of the child. Meanwhile, Olaf and his lawyer demand a DNA comparison with the remains of Magnus. Lars and Alf Hilder return to Norway, and discovering a pigeon loft on the roof of one of the buildings suggests tracking the bird's path with GPS. Soon, they spot the pigeon sent by its owner. The police raid the Neo-Luddite's farm and arrest Ben Joseph and others. All the found documents are brought to the station, and among them, Detective Yorn finds a dossier on three women. But Alex calls them an unimportant clue and advises throwing them away. However, Yorn scans and saves them. 
The lawyer informs Olaf that his appeal has been accepted. Joseph agrees to talk only to Lars. That night, Odin advises Lars to use temproxate, which enhances his mental clarity. The next day, Torir is released, but the charges are still not dropped. The man tells Alf Hilder that he suspects Olaf in everything. At that time, Olaf addresses his followers, promising that God's plan will soon become evident and he will return to the throne. Meanwhile, Alf Hilder, concerned about her sleepwalking, visits a clinic. Lars interrogates Joseph, who informs him that the book he gave contains answers to the dead girl's mysteries. At the same time, doctors are amazed at the results of Alf Hilder's brain scan. Alex finds an elderly man on the metro station surveillance cameras, known in the UK as theoretical physicist John Roberts. He also turns out to be the author of a book on Jack the Ripper. That same day, John Roberts visits the fortune teller, who recently saw the 19th century woman, kills her, and takes her phone. Later, the police report that Ben Joseph is being sent back to his homeland, where he will be tried. Lars and Alf Hilder unofficially interrogate the man, and he confidently confirms that John is Jack the Ripper. However, the scientist is a person from the present. Although everyone is convinced that time travel is impossible, it is not. For violating the rules, the partners are removed from the case and assigned to find the missing fortune teller. Later, Alf Hilder visits a doctor who explains that the part of the brain resembling a seahorse called the hippocampus is enlarged in her. It is responsible for memory, time perception, and sleep. However, Alf Hilder categorically refuses to participate in the research. The next morning, Alf Hilder suddenly notices how heightened all her senses and perceptions are. Later, the detectives take on the fortune teller's case and find her body in a dumpster. They also find out that before her death, the woman tried to contact one of the three women who arrived from the 19th century. It turns out they were not registered because they belonged to another state. Meanwhile, John hacks the fortune teller's phone, calls the second woman named Emma, and arranges a meeting. That evening, the Volva comes to Olaf and convinces him to get rid of Maddie, as he needs another woman to return to power. Meanwhile, the police receive a report that the victim's phone is active. The detectives get permission for a raid and head to the phone's location. However, John arrives there first, and the police find the second dead girl. Later in one of the churches, Olaf the Fat baptizes children, after which a young priest secretly pours holy water from the font into a bottle and takes it to the third woman from the past, Nessie. At this time, Alf Hilder watches a video in which John lectures about the paradoxes of time travel. Later, she confesses to Lars that she suddenly became much smarter. The detectives arrive at the temporary detention center for newcomers, and its director recalls that the professor from the British University was interested in the three English women. Meanwhile, John finds Nessie in one of the boarding houses. She behaves bravely, confident that she can crush him with God's help. At that moment, a priest enters the room and sprinkles John with holy water. The killer screams, covering his face, and falls dead. But just as the delighted couple rushes to hug each other, John gets up and laughs mockingly. He had just played a trick on them. Nessie pulls out a gun, but when she pulls the trigger, John ducks, and the bullet hits the priest right in the forehead. John takes the woman away with him. Oslo police reopen the case after Blake tells them about John Roberts, which surprises the partners since they had just tracked him down. Meanwhile, Olaf kicks Maddie out. Lars and Alf Hilder conclude that someone from the station is leaking information to the English and suspect Alex. Additionally, Lars believes that Scotland Yard sent John through time as part of a secret operation and volunteers to present the evidence. Lars brings Alf Hilder to his place, takes Temproxit, and immediately sees Odin's image instead of his reflection. They sit at the computer with a hidden internet connection and find information about Project 19 aimed at sending English agents into the past. Later, they go to the priest's murder scene and learn about Nessie's abduction. On the same day, John calls the police and offers to exchange Nessie for Agent Blake. In the evening, Ingrid tells her parents that she decided to keep the baby. Olaf arrives at his namesake church when the news reports that illegal substances were found in his house. He is excommunicated from the church. Enraged, Olaf realizes that Maddie turned him into the police and together with the vulva, sets out to find Alf Hilder. Meanwhile, the police begin the exchange operation. Blake goes to the metro station designated by John as the meeting place. Alf Hilder and Lars lose sight of the Englishman and follow him against orders. Blake receives a call from John who instructs him to go into the tunnel. The men meet as old acquaintances. John admits that the girl is already dead. He killed because the three women saw him in the past and could reveal the project. Back in England, he was just testing the time travel device and cut them to cover his tracks. After explaining his actions, John kills Blake. 
At this time, Olaf's car is hit by a train. In the metro tunnel, Alf Hilder finds Blake's body and runs after John. At the accident site, the Volva persuades Olaf to forget about this world because they will soon be in a better place where he will be king again and she will be his queen. Meanwhile, Alf Hilder catches up with John, but he laughs at her and deftly dodges the bullets. However, when he shoots at her, the girl demonstrates her new ability and also dodges the bullets. John is delighted that she is like him, but Alf Hilder intends to grab the man, and when both time travelers make contact, an explosion occurs. Meanwhile, Alex calls the station and says he won't be coming to work today. He then goes to a secret center where he is submerged in a bath to connect with a parallel reality. But after the explosion in the tunnel, the equipment shuts down and the signal is lost. Alf Hilder wakes up in her bed, not understanding how she got there. She goes to work, but upon entering the office, she finds her colleagues singing church hymns. Her boss does not recognize her and sends her to the cleaning crew where Alex is also present, who secretly arranges a meeting. Meanwhile, the center's workers note that Alex has been in the alternative reality much longer than allowed. At this time, Alex meets Alf Hilder and tells her that her encounter with John caused a time rift and created a new reality. Then the man feels ill and collapses. The contact is lost. It turns out that in this reality, Olaf is the absolute monarch. Alf Hilder finds to rear the dog's supporters and learns that he was beheaded and the vulva became the queen. She goes to the palace and demands an audience with the queen, who, recognizing the woman, orders her imprisonment. The prisoners tell Alf Hilder that Lars is a local shaman who long ago predicted that she would free them from the evil king. The women trick the guard, and Alf Hilder manages to escape. She finds Lars, who says that the killer is the key to everything. The woman returns to the police station, opens Venka's computer, and finds information about the murders and John's last known whereabouts. She goes to the seashore where he is fishing. John greets her as if he has been expecting her for a long time. He offers to go to the distant past when the first fish came ashore to prevent the emergence of humanity. The warrior draws a knife, but suddenly falls as if an invisible hand is choking her. Before her eyes flash visions of her rescue from the sea in childhood, and she hears the shaman Lars's words that the unborn cannot die. The vulva cries upon learning of Alf Hilder's escape. She, however, manages to stab John, thus closing the time rift. Everything returns to its place. Lars finds Alf Hilder's body in the tunnel, and later she wakes up in the hospital. Her partner tells her that, according to the official version, John died in the metro, and there is no mention of Project 19 Inches in the reports. Alex suffered a stroke. Olaf was severely injured, and the vulva died. Alf Hilder tells Lars about how she was found in the past in a modern vest. Later, Ingrid goes for an ultrasound. Alf Hilder examines the evidence from Olaf's car crash and finds the stolen crucifix pendant, remembering that little vulva took it. Meanwhile, Alex is informed that, according to the test results, Alf Hilder is 25% related to Lars. She is experiencing a memory of how Ingrid, at four years old, gave her the cross. Despite the fantastic setting, the current situation in Europe is clearly traced. The reaction to the migration crisis and the assimilation of newcomers, who often live by concepts and principles rather than laws, still carefully demonstrates that a common language can be found with the Cro-Magnon man, if of course he agrees to it.